What is the highest ISO on your camera that you can shoot a commercial ad campaign with? Or deliver any images with. Now, yes, they go up to ridiculous ones. Canon have a H1 and H2 expansion mode. It might be called different things in different brands, but you can get your ISO way up. But there is a limit to the highest ISO that you should use in certain settings or for certain reproduction. Now, we're going to jump onto the computer at the end and I'm going to sort of show you because me saying that on this camera here, 1250 is the highest you should use, has no bearing on your camera because all cameras have different ISO capabilities. However, before we dive onto the computer and look at a few shots I've taken with the camera and sort of go, this is where it stops being good. There are a little, few little caveats to take into consideration. One is what the quality of light is in the area you're shooting. You can bump your ISO up so much higher if there's good quality light compared to in a dark, murky setting. So if you're shooting sport in a well-lit arena, you can go really high with the ISO and it'll still look good. That same ISO shot in a dark, dingy basement will look completely useless. A lot of the concerns with ISO is over noise. And I think this is perhaps the wrong thing to be concerned about. Because for me, the noise is fine. We can hide it in grain. I would never use noise reduction software personally. But there's a lot we can do with the noise. And sometimes noise just looks good. It makes it look like it was low light. The problem is, though, the compression of colours. Now, I'm not a techie guy, so I'm going to try and explain this in a way that I'd understand it. But basically, on my 5D Mark II, 160 ISO is the native ISO for the camera, and you get this many colours. By the time you get to 3200, you get about this many colours. So we're losing a lot of colours. So the reds, they might have a million reds, now have half a million reds. The yellows the same, you know, and we start to lose this and we lose the latitude as well. The shadows start turning black sooner. The whites blow out sooner. The dynamic range just really crams in. So for me, it's more a matter of losing colour than it is getting noise. And I think noise is one of these weird things that's been marketed to photographers as a bad thing. Whereas back in the film days, we used to shoot, what's the one, Ilford 3200 Delta film, which had golf ball size grain and you'd probably bang it in some rodinol to really accentuate the accents and the size of the grain and agitate the crap out of it just to make it really sort of gritty and grungy whereas now everyone wants clinical clean crispy things because that's what they've been marketed but in a commercial photography world I've never had anybody ask me about noise the cleanliness of an image the sharpness of an image they just want it to look nice let's talk about Okay, let's talk about high ISO. Now, you're probably wondering why oh, I've got this weird composition going on here. Um, I'll get into that in a bit with the oven door and the carry bag. But this is not a technical review of ISO. This is talking about the practicalities and the functionality of ISO and what the highest ISO you can use is. Now, the numbers are almost irrelevant in this because the scene you shoot has a dramatic impact on the ISO's ability and quality. You can get a noisy image at 100 ISO if exposure or the scene is a particular way. And you get a pretty clean one at 1600 ISO. So we're not going to be looking so much at the numbers. I'll mention them and I'll keep them in the top corner. But what we're really looking at is the amount of noise and colour shift. Now I've shot a dim scene because testing ISO in a studio environment on a tripod is pointless because by the time you're at 1600 ISO I guarantee you it's not because you've got flashlights and a tripod. So let's delve into this. I focus on the Godox bit here. This is on the Canon 5DS with a Sigma 35mm lens. This is a notoriously bad low light camera. And this is 400 ISO, which I think a lot of people say is as high as you can go with this camera. I've actually shot a billboard at 1250 with it, but there we go. So I've got a, a Godox softbox and a Broncola head, which is the weirdest combination you'll ever see. Um, but for me, this is fine. This is at 100% I'm zooming into. My plants have died because I've been on um, lockdown and not doing anything with them. I've gone for really big scenes. I've got inside the oven, which is pitch black. The curtains here, the natural greens of the plants, the reds of the fire blanket, and down here, this like neon green. And look at this, it's not a real dead bird. There's a toy bird that fell off one of the plants and all the dead leaves have died since. So 400 ISO, this here, this level of noise, fine for anything. Now, if you open up the shadows, you'll notice it doesn't do it as well as you could do with perhaps a 100 ISO image. But if you could use a 100 ISO, you'd probably have a lot of light or sunlight. So different game altogether. Now we're going to jump all the way up to 6,400. 
And the reason I'm doing these next to each other is because 400 is the lowest we've got here and this is the highest. And you can see the difference. If we come back here, there's 400, see how crisp and clean it is. The highest it will go and you can see once it renders, this like gritty golf ball-y noise. Now I have no problem with this, but it is, it's using it at the right time. In a portrait, this would be fine. No one needs to be that sharp for a portrait. For a billboard showing a McDonald's burger, this is not acceptable. For an Instagram post for behind the scene, when you look at it from this far out, you cannot tell the difference. Now, if we zoom into our oven over here, you'll see one, the, the blacks are just black now. It's all a bit hazy and golf ball-y, but this is what I do to deal with this particular shot. I'd slide down to the grain. I'd add a load of grain and I'd make a feature of it rather than trying to denoise this and make it look like some crisp, clean, clinical nonsense, I'd add to it. And that's how I deal with a lot of the noise issues. Now, one of the big differences is the colors. You start to lose how many greens there are and how many reds there are, but it's not that great. Yes, there's no detail here, but it's at 1.8, so it wasn't in focus anyway. So if we skip back to the previous shot at 400, there's not that much detail anyway. So this at 400 here, fine for billboard, fine for anything. When we jump over to the maximum where it's really noisy, fine for a billboard, but only if the context is right. Absolutely fine for social media, for Instagram, it's gonna be seen much smaller than this. So a lot of it comes down to a sort of horses for courses mentality. Now 3200, we'll zoom in here. That's actually pretty good, it'd be fine for magazine print. It wouldn't be perfect again, it wouldn't give you that like high polished look. But if it was some fashion work with a nice grainy sort of aesthetics with that hazy look, you're shooting at sunset and you want to use that available light in the blue hour perhaps. This is absolutely fine. I would not start, I've heard it's a noise ninja or something like that. Whenever you use noise reduction, it looks like you've used noise reduction. Everyone can tell it doesn't look good and only photographers care about this noise. So here we are at 800. Now, this here for me, in terms of like a, a billboard print and having a crisp look, this is the limit at 800. Now, if you lit it well and went to 800 I said it would look even better, but this is in a badly lit room. And um, these blinds are down. This is the sun, how much, it's pretty dark in here. Um, but you could print this on a billboard and not have any worries, you know, it'd still look crisp because of the DPI that they use. On a six sheet, on a very like point of sale at the end of a sort of a supermarket aisle, you'd struggle because it'd be a little bit too mushy and grainy. But again, if you're going for that aesthetic, that'd be fine. Now, if we look at my website where everything is crisp, clean and clinical, Everything's shot at 100 ISO, but I could get the same look at 400 if I lit it in the same way. So a lot of the problem with ISO talk is that it's not, it's not comparing apples and apples. We've got apples and oranges going on here. So high ISO is normally used when the lighting is poor. However, I have friends who shoot everything at 1200 ISO and their 5D Mark III's and Mark IV's in good light because they want to reduce some of the detail it captures to get a more natural looking skin tone. And this can be used for sort of editorial food work if you want that sort of natural aesthetic, the sort of Jamie Oliver sort of 90s look. You can achieve it with that. If you want to produce work like my current portfolio, you need to light the living life out of it. Try not to swear on my videos. Um, and for that, you will need a lot of light. You won't need the high ISO. So it's, it's not saying that you can't produce good work at high ISO and you can print it at high ISO. Now, one of the things I would do for this 6400 image, if it was a behind the scenes shot and I had to shoot at this ISO, you can guarantee I'm going black and white. Because the noise here, yeah, it's noisy, but we've got this film look going on. So it's really bang that grain up, increase the size. And then the big thing for noise is, oh, hang on, I might have overkilled that. It's a... Uh, there's a bit of a delay in it happening. I don't know. <laughs> we'll get these blacks and we'll crush the blacks. We'll bring them right down. I'm holding the alt key if you're wondering how I'm achieving that. Okay, that's lovely. Crushed blacks. The whites just bleeding through. It's a nice high key black and white image. But again, it's all about aesthetic. That's not necessarily what you think looks good. And actually, I've, I've gone too far, but there we go. There we go. I like the high key black and white for behind the scenes. 
But ISO is a very subjective matter. And I think it's something which a lot of people stress about. Like, oh, I can't post this image, it's too noisy. My partner used to work in advertising. She's not a photographer. If I show her an image, she will not notice the noise. A good image will always out trump high noise. Let me show you a couple of case in points. Okay, let's look at these images here. Now, this is a quick Google to find them. This was shot on a film at 6,400 ISO. And now it was shot on 35 millimeter films. It's not notoriously good for low light work because of the size of the negative and the size of the grain according to that, but it gives the look and the aesthetic. Again here, lit by a single like 30 watt light bulb. And yes, if you're looking technically, there's blown out highlights, there's crushed blacks, but the mood in general works. Now this particular shot was at 6400 ISO on a 5D Mark II. It's got blur in it. It's always, you know, I was trying to recreate one of those clash images that we've all seen. Um, this is Wolf Atlas, which is why Google to get to this page. And again, the blacks are crushed, the highlights are clipped. And any photographer who looks at these things will go, oh, these are the technical problems. But anyone who sees the image says it's a cool image. Now on the flip side, this image here was shot with flash at 100 ISO. Now this image is no better than this image because of the ISO that was used. This could be printed big, this could be printed big. It doesn't actually matter, it's all to do with aesthetic. However, if we head back to my main page, the work here, you can tell it shot at a low ISO. And the reason you can tell that is because it's well lit and it has to have a low ISO just to cope with that much light. Even at F10, F13, which a lot of these shots are at, you, you, need, you can't go above 100 ISO for them. Now, yes, you could create these shots at a higher ISO, but there's no need to. Now, if we go to the portrait world, which is a very different sort of setup, some of these shots here, the shot here of my friend Roger was shot at a really high ISO, you know, 2000 perhaps. This shot here, 1200 ISO. But these shots are no better or worse because of that than compared to this image here shot in a studio on a massive phase one camera at 100 ISO or 50 ISO. Again, this shot here, 100 ISO, F10. But then we come over to something like this where it shot at 640 ISO. And the noise you don't notice because we're looking at the image. You only notice noise when you're looking at your own images and you're zooming into 100% and going, oh, is that too noisy to post? Is that, you know, is it usable? These here were shot in expansion ISO, like the highest you can go. The grain on these is like, and the noise is like golf ball size. It had to be black and white because the colors had just disappeared, but it's still a good image because of the context. Whereas when executing a shot like this, where there's food in it, I can't afford to up the ISO because I can't afford to lose the colors in the food. So yes, I could shoot it and reproduce it at a high ISO as a portrait, but because the food is in it, I have to really be careful of these things. So it's not as simple a question as going, which ISO is you know the highest I can shoot at, is which ISO is the highest I can use for this context whilst delivering this shot. Again, super high ISO, stage lighting. I only had an F4 lens when I was shooting wide back then. It would be F4, it was like 80th of a second and probably 3,200 ISO. And I've crushed those blacks in the background until there's no noise left because that's the aesthetic I wanted. Whereas when we're looking at this uh, Paris Fashion Week image, 3,200 ISO, and I've kept the noise in the shadows. It was shot on film. You can see I scratched the negative like an absolute moron. But I actually like it now because it proves it was shot on film, which is kind of a weird thing to care about. But the grain is part of the aesthetic here. Very similar shot, a few frames on. I wanted a crisp, clean, sharp image, so I shot at 100 ISO. Now, these are two very similar images. The, the actual light was very similar. You know, I used a different aperture. I shot at F2 and I've got the background wonky, which is annoying, but they're two very similar images. But I've used different ISOs and not because of the noise I wanted to save on, but because of the effects I wanted to create. And I think that's a really good way to see ISO. And whether it's colour or black and white also has a real big bearing as to what you can get away with. You can't shoot too high in the ISO in colour, but if you're going to flip it to black and white, then I just think go as high as you want. And it's the decision as to whether it needs to be crisp and clean for this particular body of work where it was documentary work, I wanted as much detail as possible. I wanted to really show every crease in every person. So 100 ISO was the one. In this here, that wasn't important to me. So I could have shot it at any ISO I wanted. I think I shot this at 640 ISO with an old tungsten lamp and a camera with movements. So it's about aesthetic and it's about choice. 
Now, I hope this has been of some use to you and I hope it helps explain how to choose the highest ISO you should shoot. I, I, I hope it explains how to choose the highest ISO that you think you should shoot at, the context, how you're going to use it and what can work for your images. There's a lot of fear out there amongst photographers about using high ISOs and I think as long as you use the right ISO for the application, for the aesthetic you're trying to achieve, you can print it as big as you like. So I hope that helps you a little bit in terms of working out what's good, what's bad, what looks nice, what doesn't look nice, and sort of just ease any anxiety over when using ISO. Of course, the application's important, whether it's going for web. If you're going on web, you can bump that ISO way up because we're gonna see it about yay big on a phone screen most of the time. If it's for print, you know, slightly different issues going on there. You know, you really wanna make sure that at the size you're printing it, this grain doesn't get out of control or that you lose too much detail from the viewing distance. So it's not a one size fits all sort of answer, but hopefully from the images I've shown you, it gives you a bit of an idea as to what can and can't be done. If you're enjoying these videos, we want to learn more about the business of photography, do subscribe to this channel and I'll see you all next time.